All right, good afternoon. Um, let's get started. So, obviously, we're just going to use today's presentation for an exam review. Any questions you have that, um, that we should look at? Any questions or any specific um, topic that we should uh, review? Correct. So, yep, I'll, I'll, I'll look at some examples that hopefully cover um, you know, a good amount of material. So there's like a simple one that you can just, you know, you, you have to look at the table, right, to figure out them. But there's like a more complicated one that you have to use the S translation or the T translation and then you know, at some point, you might be asked to find the inverse Laplace transform, which again has the corresponding rules. We can definitely look at some examples on those. Um, I have a couple examples. Hopefully, that will help. But any specific questions? Question five. Okay. So, oh, okay. So that's a delta function. Yep, that's a good one. We can look at that. Um, why don't we start with that, and then I will go over a couple examples I have. You'll be given the table. Actually, that's a good point. Um, from so there's an announcement from Professor Gibson went out today. I think it was today. Oh, yesterday. Uh, this morning. Okay, great. So the table will be provided. Um, you have to print it out and bring it. I believe. I don't think he's going to print them out and bring them. From, from my understanding that you have to print out the table, don't write anything else on it, just whatever is there, and then bring it. So the table, I took a quick look, it has all the common Laplace transforms, as well as um, the, the S translation, the inverse, and the T translation, the inverse. Maybe the, I think the delta function is already there, but I'm not quite sure. Didn't look that closely. So print it out when you have time. I'll ask your friends to print it for you. So homework problem number five, which is solving initial value problem with y double prime plus four y prime plus five y is equal to delta t minus two pi. The initial condition given is y of zero equals y prime of zero equals zero. Since this is a homework problem, so some parts I might just kind of do it quickly, is that okay? I mean, the solution is already available, I believe. Um, so the way I'm doing it is that, well, also Professor Gibson does, I believe, is we're just going to take the Laplace transform of the equation, so it will be of every term there. So let's just look at each term. So the y double prime, if we look at the table, so that will be s squared, capital Y of s, minus s lowercase y of 0, minus y prime of 0. So that's coming from the Laplace transform of second derivative plus 4 times uh, Laplace transform of y prime, so that's the s capital Y of s minus lowercase y of 0, and then plus 5y, which is 5 capital Y of s. So those, the, the expression in the brackets, you can find it on the table, or you can just have it memorized. And on the right hand side, we also need the Laplace transform of this delta function t minus 8, t minus 2 pi. And uh, that's a new concept, so you don't have to really worry about what delta function looks like. Um, but you should be able to figure out the Laplace transform based on the rule that the Laplace transform of a delta function t minus 8 is probably the simplest formula. Um, when you compare to T translation and S translation, so that's just going to be e to the negative a s. So we can figure out what the right hand side is. Right hand, right hand side is because we know that a is two pi. So the right hand side it just becomes e to the negative two pi s. What about the left hand side? We're just going to plug in all the initial conditions we know, the y of 0 equals 0, y prime of 0 equals 0. We're just going to put in there. So this part becomes 0, that's also a 0, that's a 0, which is good. We get rid of quite a few parts. 
So we have S squared, capital Y of S, from the first bracket, plus 4S, capital Y of S, plus 5Y of S, equals the right-hand side. Is that kind of helpful there? So that's just the first step, the standard first step when you solve initial value problems. And then we're just going to move on to the second step, which is we need to solve for capital Y of S. So let's factor it out first. On the left side, so capital Y of S times S squared plus 4S plus 5 equals e to the negative 2 pi s. And we're going to divide by the, the bracket on the left, capital Y of s equals e to the negative 2 pi s, divide by um, s squared plus 4s plus 5. And then we can go from here. So I'm going to rewrite this because the exponential expression e to the negative 2 pi s really doesn't get involved with the fraction that we need to focus on. So times 1 over s squared plus 4s plus 5. So that's the y of s. And eventually we want to find lowercase y of t by finding the inverse of our transform of this expression. This one, nothing we can do, but this one we can do quite a bit by finding the simplest fraction from there. So this part we can find simpler fractions if possible. We might have to complete the square or do something. I think when I was going through this last recitation, I kind of made a mistake. I said, that's why I sent out announcement. So for this one, it turns out that we cannot factor the denominator because that's a positive 5, that's a positive 4, so there's no way we can end up with a, a factor of 4, factor of the denominator. So what we're going to have to do is we have to complete the square here. So this denominator we need to complete. Complete the square here. Um, because partial fractions don't work in this part. So let's complete the square first. Let's leave this e to the negative 2 pi s. And if we complete the square in the denominator, the numerator is just 1. The denominator will give us what? It give us, um, sorry, uh, that's uh, s squared plus 4s, and then we need to, so this is uh, s squared plus 3s, and we need a b over 2 squared, so that's 4 over 2, that's a 2, 2 squared, 4, so we need a positive 4 there. We have a positive 5, so we're going to split into positive 4 and a positive 1. pi s times 1 over, uh, we have s plus 2 squared plus 1. Any questions about completing the square? I mean, it's kind of something that we expect you to know. Um, but if you if you um, are a little bit rusty on that, definitely spend some time reviewing it. So that will give us, what do we do next? Quick questions, I just kept the, yeah. just here, like the completed square is just making the first three terms into a simpler thing, quickly, it will split that s plus two squared, so you just have to like split up the, um, the last number that's in the max on it into something you can make your simpler thing. Yeah, so what we want is we want to like, something squared, that way the next step we can substitute this s plus 2 with a new s. Um, we just have 1 over s plus plus 1, that's kind of the idea. So what I did here is I split the 5 into 4, four and a 1. What we could also do to complete the square is that um, 
instead of splitting the 5, we could just say, okay, I'm just going to write down this. That's going to be s squared plus 4s. I know I need a positive 4, so I'm going to add a 4. But I'm also, because I'm introducing a new 4 there, I need to undo that. So I'm going to subtract 4 immediately. But then I also had a positive 5 at the very end. So that's kind of another way to think about it. So what we do next is that we next, we're going to use the, the substitution to replace s plus 2. But I'm going to do that in the process of inverse of positive transform, not here. Um, so this is what I have for now. I'm going to leave it the way it is. And, next, and then we can use it to find the y of t, which is the inverse Laplace transform of this box the expression, e to the negative 2 pi s times this fraction, 1 over s plus 2 squared plus 1. So, how do we find the inverse Laplace transform? Well, um, this, this part, remember that this part coming from the Dallas function in the beginning? So, when we find the inverse Laplace transform with e to the negative ax here, um, this doesn't go back to the Dallas function, this goes to the heavy type function. So, this part becomes. Um, this heavy side function u t minus a, a is what this part is, 2 pi. It's not negative 2 pi, it's positive. So t minus 2 pi. And then times the inverse Laplace transform of the remaining 1 over s plus 2 squared plus 1. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the inverse t translation. But I have to be careful in the process, at the end, the t will goes to t minus 2 pi. So that's the... So don't worry about this fraction. Just, just, so by just looking at this, I have an exponential e to the negative ax times something. And I know immediately in the inverse of transform, that would be the inverse t translation, which the exponential becomes this heavy side function. And then the last of the inverse of the transform of the remaining, and then at the end, the t will go to t minus t pi. For so the t from here, not there, just to the side. How do you know when to substitute, like whether you do t transition or s transition before you do both things that you can also have to? So you're trying to do it before. Right. Ah, good question. Um, let me finish this, and then I'll kind of put them together. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. But that's a good question. Um, it, it does get confusing from time to time, right? But let me finish this, and I'll do it um, like all together so you can compare them. Um, so anyway, so every time you have an e to the negative ax and something in an inverse Laplace transform, so that becomes a uh, heavy function. And this is the inverse t translation. Okay, so let's just leave this for now because we don't need to do anything with this part. What about this inverse Laplace transform? This part. Well, this part has a s plus 2 squared, so this is where we can replace s plus 2 with the new s. So that will be using the, the inverse s translation. So that becomes, so the, 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 the s plus 2 will become a new s. So that's the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over this new s squared plus 1. But note that this s here, the new one, is not just s, it comes from s plus 2 from the previous step. And then at the end, we still have to keep in mind that we need to replace the t with t minus 2 pi. That's just coming from the previous step. We need to carry it. Okay, so what does this become? Well, 
this is the X translation. This notation tells us that we're going to have a E to the AT coming out of there. So I have QT minus 2 pi. So this notation, this substitution we did there, that part will become e to the a t with a being s. So, so the a comes from here. So here we have plus is really at minus negative. So the a is negative two, so that goes here. E to the negative two t, and then inverse Laplace of the remaining one over s squared plus one. This problem is a little bit more difficult because there's a S translation inside the T translation. So it could be confusing as well, but uh, we kind of just have to do it step by step. And then the next step is this heavy side function, T minus 2 pi, and then E to the negative 2 T, Inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 1, that's going to be sine t by using the table. And then the t's in this part will go to t minus 2 pi. So that becomes u t minus 2 pi, and then e to the negative 2 t minus 2 pi sine t minus 2 pi. So that's the final answer. I don't really think you're going to have example like this with the S translation inside E translation. I anticipate you're going to have, you know, maybe not separate, like a separate example, which requires that you know, kind of have to recognize once you use which. Um, so with that said, let me kind of put on the side the the those rules. So, if, so for the Laplace transform, if we take the Laplace transform of e to the a t f of t, so if you see that e to the a t is in the Laplace transform, so that tells you that it's going to be the S translation. So the e to the a t will come out. We're just going to focus on the Laplace transform of f of t there. Just focus on that. No, no substitution yet. Um, and then at the end, we're going to take the s and replace it with s minus a. So what happened is that this you can think about this e to the a t becomes this substitution at the end. Does that kind of make sense? So that's the S translation. And then if we have example like Laplace transform of this heavy side function T minus A F of T. And then that, so every time you see this heavy side function times something, um, you should think about this immediately as a t translation. I mean, obviously, you're going to have a formula given. So that will be this part will come out. It doesn't become a substitution, it becomes a e to the negative a s. So there's an s there, not t. So be careful, this is the e to the negative a s. That one is e to the a t inside the local and then times Laplace transform of f of t but it's not just f of t there's actually a substitution t goes to t plus a so this is a t translation so I would see that in this t translation the heavy side function the u t minus a becomes e to the negative a s and also the t becomes t plus a before we find the Laplace transform of 
which is different from the previous one. The previous one, the e to the at, comes out, becomes a substitution, but here it comes out, becomes this term, and also a substitution before the last term. But if you don't have e to the at, or if you don't have u t minus a, then you don't use either one. You just find, you know, just do it normally, I guess. Um. Okay, so how about the inverse? The inverse, let's just see, we have inverse Laplace transform. I'm going to write it a little bit different from the notation Professor Gibson does, but it's the same. So if we have inverse Laplace transform of, let's see, um, uh, 1 over s minus a squared, for example. But there have to be 1, it could be something more complicated. Um, or s plus a squared. Something like that. And more generally, it's the inverse f of um, s minus a. So if we have s minus a in the in the inverse Laplace notation of f, f plus a in the inverse Laplace notation, so it's kind of like uh, like what we have here. We have Plus two square, right? Plus a square. That's the indicator that we're going to use in inverse S translation. The first example will become so just inverse Laplace transform of. So this part, s minus a, will become the new s. So the inverse 1 over s squared with the notation that s coming from s minus a. And in the following step, this part will become e to the at times inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared. I hope that doesn't confuse you. I mean, it could be really confusing the way I wrote, but uh, does that kind of make sense? So in, if, you, if you have like some function of s, not t, just s, at the end you have this like s plus a or s minus a, some expression like that, you can use a substitution for it. So you're going to use the substitution, but know what the substitution is. And in the following step, the substitution will become this part, the exponential. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so the substitution, you can think about it becoming the, the exponential outside with a t. So that's kind of like the S translation right here. So we have the exponential on the substitution, but here we have a substitution that we substituted, and that will become the exponential. Now, what about the the inverse t translation? That's the case if you have inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative a s or positive a s. Doesn't matter. You have something like that times some function of s. So if you have something like this, that's the indicator that we're going to end up with the Heaviside function. So that's going to become u t minus a, and then we're just going to find the inverse Laplace of the remaining, but in the process, at the end, we're going to have to remember to replace the t with t minus a. So note that this e to the negative a s in the inverse Laplace becomes this heavy side function, and then we have this extra substitution at the end. So that's a lot of pieces here. Um, again, my notation might be slightly different from what Professor Gibson writes. But I think you're going to find them more or less the same as long as you know how to use them.
I hope I'm not teaching you anything wrong there. Uh, Questions? So there's a lot of pieces. I know, you know, it, if I'm the first one, the first time learning it, I know it's really confusing. Um, but hopefully, you know, you study for it and then you understand it better. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. Yep. If that were to be S going to S plus A, would it go to P to the negative AT? Correct. So, so just think about like a, the, the plus A is the minus the negative. Excellent. So this is a, let me note that this is the inverse T translation. Use that example we did quite a bit work there. Um, then we have a few more minutes. Um, I kind of want to go through, you know, more questions that you might have. Anything else that we should go over? All right. So keep those. You all have those in your notes, right? I'm going to write down one example, and you tell me how to find the Laplace transform. It may not follow those rules, maybe just using something else. f of t is equal to 4 t plus 1 squared. Actually, t minus 1 squared. So, how do we find the Laplace transform of 4 times t minus 1 squared? Does it look like a S translation? No, right? Because we don't have an e to the at times. So we, we're finding Laplace transform of 4 t minus 1 squared. So we don't have an e to the at there. So no. Is it t translation? Does it have a heavy side function attached to it? No, right? It doesn't have a. So, so, in order to do a t translation, we need to have the u there, the u t minus a. We don't have that, because here we just have 4 times t minus 1 squared. We don't have the heavy side function there. I mean, this is like f of t minus 1, but that's not enough. We still don't have, so we don't have this u t minus 1. If we have that being part of it, then we can use it, but we don't have it. So no, we cannot use the t-translation. But the question is, how do we find the Laplace transform? You can bring out the 4 Exactly. You can bring out the 4 because that's a constant. And the quadratic, we're just going to expand it and then make three terms out of there. So I just want to use this example to show you that even though it looks kind of like, you know, t minus a there, but it's not the heavy side function. But in this case, we can bring the full outside and expand it. And if we do that, we get full times the plus transform of, if we expand the t minus 1 squared, so that's a t squared minus 2t plus 1. And uh, we should be able to figure out the plus transform of each one based on the table. Is that okay if I leave it there? Okay. I just want to use that as an example to show you that, you know, a lot of ways that we write them looks like, oh, you have to use this, but no, you have, you cannot. Um, and just pay attention because you might think like, oh, this looks like we can use the inverse S translation because it's like, a, maybe we can use a substitution and call this a new T. No, because we looking for the Laplace transform, not the inverse. So that's just something to, to, to decide. Um, okay, uh, and 
another thing I want to kind of talk about is, well, not just, just a review. So, for example, if I have, so given f of t is equal to, let's see, um, piecewise function, 0 for t is from 0 to 5, uh, 2t minus 3 for t is from 5 to infinity. Uh, there might be more pieces, but doesn't matter. Let's just focus on this. So, can we find Laplace transform of this f of t? And if you remember that, you know, like maybe last week, today is Tuesday, yeah, last week. Um, if you have an example like this, what you have to do first is that you have to take the piecewise function. Here it has two different pieces. And you're going to convert that using piecewise function, which is a u function. So you can graph it if you want, sketch a graph, but I'm not going to do that. So the way I do it is just I'm looking at those functions. The first one is 0. Okay, nothing fancy there. The second one is 2t minus 3. So it's not a zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the factors from both functions. So I'm going to kind of pull this to the front in front of the curly bracket. So I get f of t is equal to 2t minus 3 times. Okay, now I'm thinking about, okay, what I'm going to end up with after I factor that out. If I take something out of zero, what do I end up with? So you begin with nothing, you factor something out, you still have nothing, right? So we still have zero here. So what if I take 2t minus 3 from itself? Well, if I factor something out of itself, there should be one left. Does that kind of make sense? I mean, that's not new, right? You should know that. So the interval doesn't change. So what I did is that I basically take this piecewise function, I end up with a factor, a function times a new piecewise function. This new piecewise function, I can write it using a heavy side function. And I don't know off my head, but I know that the trick I'm using is I'm going to graph it. It's, it should be pretty easy to graph this piecewise function because it only has 0 and 1. So from 0 to 5, the value is 0. So 0 to 5, the value is 0. So it's on the x-axis. From 5 to infinity, the value is 1. So what happened with the set function is that it goes from 0 and it jumps to 1 at 5. And if you remembered from the lecture notes, if you have a jump at t equals at this um, a value 5, so the heavy side function is u t minus 5. And that's what we're going to use instead of this heavy, instead of this uh, piecewise function. So f of t is equal to 2t minus 3 times this heavy side function u t minus 5, which allow us to find the Laplace transform using the, the, the t-translation. Does that kind of make sense that the sort of the beginning part? And from here, I could find the um, Laplace transform. So Laplace transform of f of t is the plus transform of 2t minus 3 times this u function, t minus 5. Like we talked about earlier, so you look at the Laplace transform, so is it going to be x translation, t translation, or is it going to be either one? Well, by looking at it, we have the, uh, the u function, the heavy side function here. If you have it, that means we're going to use the, the t translation. So that's the indicator. So, T translation.
And then we kind of just follow the formula, right? So using the T translation, this U function will come up and it becomes E to the negative AS. And then we're going to figure out what A is in a minute. And you probably know, right? Times Laplace transform of remaining. The remaining is what? The remaining is this part. So Laplace transform of 2 to minus 3. And then if you look at the T translation, we cannot just find out the last term of the remaining. We have to use the substitute equation, which is T plus A. And again, we're going to figure out what the T is. I mean, the A is. So what is A? A is coming from this part. This is the T minus 5. So the, this is like a U T minus A. A is 5 from there. So A equals 5 from there. So we're just going to put A equals 5, so that's a 5, this is 5. And then this will eventually become what? Become, um, so let's just kind of follow the steps. So the E to the negative 5S doesn't change. And then we're finding Laplace transform of 2t minus 3, so that's a 2, the t will become t plus 5, 2t plus 5 minus 3, and then expand the, the 2t plus 5, and then combine with negative 3, so that becomes e to the negative 5s, Laplace transform of 2t plus 10 minus 3 plus 7, and then we work with each one of them. So my advisor that don't just say, oh, here's a, here's this, this is the formula. I want to apply the formula. I want to get the final answer immediately. You might have to do quite a bit of um, work in the steps in the, in the middle to get the final answer. Just you know, write down step by step. That's the e to the negative five s plus transform of two t is two over s squared, two times one over s squared. And the Laplace transform of 7, which is 7 times 1, right? So that just gives us 7 times Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over S. One thing I want to kind of note on that. So, so this new t phi function has zero and a one, and then enough to graph like this. So that's the has a corresponding heavy phi function u t minus a. Um, if you have something that's going up and then coming down, like let's say you have a, a new piecewise function after you pull out the factor. So you end up with zero first at a, and then it goes to one at you know some interval, but then it comes down to zero again at b. So it's going up here and then going down there. If you have something like this, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a new um, verified function for that. It goes up at a, which tells us that we're going to have. So this. At this point, so that's going to be u t minus a. But then it coming down at t. I, the way I look at it, if it's going down, so it's going to be a negative. When it goes up, it's a positive sign. So that will be a negative u t minus b. So that's something to keep in mind if you have 
uh, view type function looks like this. Then you end up with this too. But you just kind of multiply with the fact that it really has two separate um, functions with heavy side expressions. And another one similar to this, but I like to think about it as a little bit different. Um, but it's really coming from this case. So what if we just begin with at t equals zero, begin with one, and then it comes down at b, for example. The way I do it is I just think, well, okay. So imagine there's nothing here. So I'm going to begin with zero and then going up at zero. So I imagine that there's a piece on the left that goes up at zero here. So going up at zero and coming down at b, so that will be uh, u t minus zero minus u t minus b. And if this t minus u t minus zero is just going to be one. So you're either going to stick with this form eventually, or if I don't have a transform, it doesn't change it to a different form into one, or you can just create it as one to begin with. So the way I memorize it, this tracing is the same as this one. It just can shift it to the, to the left a little bit. Questions? Um, yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe we can just use this. Yep. Correct. Correct. Yep. Um. Yeah. It's uh. It's. Where was it? It doesn't. It doesn't. Um. So for the you're right for the T translation. So. The Laplace transform, before we find the Laplace transform, we have to substitute the T with T plus A. So the inverse, when we pull this out, at the very end, after we find the Laplace, the, the inverse Laplace transform, at the very end, we need to replace the T with T minus A. But for the S translation, we don't, because the S translation, it's a different process, obviously, right? Um, for the S translation, that so the Laplace transform is this exponential part itself becomes a substitution. Um, becomes S minus A. And then for the inverse is that this substitution that we substituted will become this exponential part. So it doesn't affect the, the remaining part, either this F of T here. Well, at the end, you know, when we do the that we do it at any rate, we use the substitution to replace that. But it doesn't change the Laplace transform of the inverse Laplace transform of this type of that. I, I would say, really, uh, look at the, tab the table and the formula that Professor Gibson provides and try to understand what they say. Because I, I think for him, when he writes down the inverse um, translation, he kind of puts this part on the left and puts this one on the right. I think that's what he got, but I need to double check. Oh, so we're, are we we're given um, this type of thing that we see? Correct. Yeah, the other common ones. Um, yeah, the, the first, I believe he also, you know, just like the, the, the 1, the t, the t square, all those t to the n sine, cosine, exponential, and then even the derivatives, I believe, are provided. And then the second page is like the S translation, the T translation. Yes. Yeah. Take a look. Take a, be familiar with it. Um, um, Let's see. It's almost time. We got four minutes. Any other questions? 
So it's so a one problem I wrote. I didn't have time to go over them, but uh, I think we kind of did a good amount of work that shouldn't be too bad. So maybe we can just look at them quickly, not necessarily solving step by step. So it's a solve initial value problem y double prime plus y equals t u t times u t minus one with initial conditions y of zero equals one y prime of zero equals zero. So the first step is what? Laplace transform of every piece, right? So if we do that with the left hand side by using the Laplace transform of each one, so we get s squared y of s minus s lowercase y of zero minus y prime of zero. That's coming from the second derivative. And then y just give us y of s. What about the Laplace transform of t u t minus one? So that's the indicator. So I'm not going to do that because it's very similar to what we did with this. So let's just see we do everything correctly at the end and then we plug in initial values and then we end up with capital Y of S equals S over S squared plus 1 plus E to the negative S times so we let's see we come in denominator we get 1 plus S over S squared S squared plus 1 at the end. What do we do here if we want to find the, the inverse of the plus transform at the end? This one is okay, right? It's one of the, the special ones in the table. What about this one? This is where we have to use partial fractions to break it down. And if we use partial fractions there to rewrite it, so this give us s over s squared plus 1 plus e to the negative s and that will give us let me write down what I have so that's a 1 over s plus 1 over s squared plus negative s minus 1 over s squared plus 1 So that would be the first one, we just leave it, plus e to the negative s, 1 over s plus 1 over s squared. You should split the last fraction into 2, so that becomes minus s over s squared plus 1, minus 1 over s squared plus 1. Now we have some plus fractions. I'm going to write down one more thing, I know that we have to go. Um, so now we're going to find... So after we get simple fractions, we can find the inverse of plus transform, right? We can find y of t. This is probably the last line I'm going to write. So y of t is equal to inverse of well, one more line, I promise. I'm going to be done soon. Um, inverse of plus of the first one, s over s squared plus 1. Nothing fancy. What about this one? Inverse of plus of e to the negative s times 1 over s plus 1 over s squared minus s over s squared plus 1 minus 1 over s squared plus 1. What do we do with this one? This is e to the negative s times something, and we're looking for the inverse of plus transform. Which rule do we use? Not the s, because it's e to the negative s in there. That, if we go back a little bit, so that's this part, e to the negative big s times something. How do you use an inverse key translation? But obviously, you know, it doesn't matter the name as long as you know the correct one, right? Okay. Last line. 
promise you that I'm going to let you go. Come on. Okay. So this one should be straightforward based on the table. But this one, this e to the negative s will come up, become a heavy side function, u t minus a. A is coming from this e to the negative a s. So the a is 1 there. So t minus 1. And then we find an inverse Laplace of the remaining 1 over s plus 1 over s squared minus s over s squared plus 1 minus 1 over s squared plus 1. But don't forget, this is the inverse t translation. We have a special substitution. t goes to t minus 1 at the end. Anyway, I'm done. Sorry for taking two minutes. I didn't finish, but I just wanted to say that the rest of you should be able to use the table to pick up the inverse of top side on this path. All right, good luck. Um, for this, uh, yeah, I can write down the answer. So at the end, it's going to be cosine t plus the heavy side function u t minus 1 and the bracket. So I have 1 plus t minus 1 minus cosine t minus 1 minus sine t minus 1. So that's the final answer. Sorry. Good to go, guys. All right, take care. No, I don't think that's recitation on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Yeah. Take care. All right. Take care. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Take care. So these are, your recitations are so helpful compared to the lectures. I sometimes wish you were the professor. But I think the professor kind of try to cover a lot and explain, yeah. explain all the concepts. Um, and we just try to focus on examples. I'm, I'm glad that it helps. Yeah. All right. Yep, good luck.